Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Continuing on my Vancouver Island summer trips, here I am at Choham Village, somewhere in the uh, center of Quadicum Beach. So here I just sketched my cup of uh, latte and chocolate chip cookie. After that, I used a pencil to do a very quick drafting of the urban structures and shapes in front of me, the little village. Um, and now I'm ready to draw those um, renderings with my fine liner pen. So for this sketch, I'm using the Windsor and Newton brand 0.8 tip waterproof fine liner pen. So um, as usual, I'd like to begin with the, uh, the foreground elements. In this case, as, uh, these two ladies chatting with each other here, sitting by the table with their cups of coffee. So drawing people for me is always fun and I always love to include um, people in my urban sketches, especially cafe sketches, uh, the patio area outside the cafe or restaurant that adds so much more, you know, a, hap a sense of happiness to this little sketch. And um, after the foreground element, I'm going to begin drawing the uh, urban structures, this little cottage house on the very left side. Um, Okay, so I begin with the uh, trapezoid shape of the rooftop and then on its right, there's this big shrub with a lot of leaves, just drawing really quickly to summarize the clusters of leaves on this spherical shape of the shrub. And I'm shading in some of the larger gaps in between some of those leaves to give a sense of volume for that shrub. And then a shorter shrub on the very left side, um, the gutter of the of this little cottage house, and the um, underneath the roof we have the eaves. Now I'm drawing the the window frames and the the larger rectangular frame here on the right is the old fashioned door. Yeah, so it's adding a bit of accentuation around. Uh, the right side of the of these two frames and just quickly drawing every single brick piece very quickly summarizing uh, the, the pattern so these are like very loose little round rectangles and yeah so this area underneath the cottage house is very bushy containing uh, a variety of species of shrubs and other greeneries so now I'm drawing this, uh, probably a fountain thing over here in front of the cottage. And then more leafy greens surrounding it. So when I'm drawing these leafy greens with stalks, I just get the those branches done. And then adding the leaves on both sides of each stalk. Um, and now some larger leaves for this uh, another species of, of greens over here. Uh, I just drew the, the large branches of that little tree there and some more loose organic lines for leaves on the right side of the fountain. Really paying, paying attention to how these leaves are curving and draping down rather than just mindlessly drawing the random shapes. And I'm also continuing to use thicker and also hatching lines with my fountain pen to shade the bottom of that little uh, shrub's canopy there and drawing more leaves of various designs. Yeah, I love how nature is designing um, so many species of, um, of plants and drawing the border of this large flower bed over here, expanding larger and larger as it moves closer to me here in the foreground. And then quickly summarizing the shapes of these stones, making up the flower bed with the concrete. And moving on to this little tree here, closer to the middle, finishing the, uh, the little branches and, th and then the twigs wrapping around the canopy here on top. And just taking my time with these little renderings at the same time, drawing this loose outline of the canopy. And then adding these baby branches sticking out from the middle here and there. Little squiggles for leafy textures on the canopy. 
And I just drew the little chimney for the cottage and using really rapid horizontal lines for the rooftop texture. And this triangular side view of the roof of another uh, village house. The front of the house is extremely foreshortened because of the angle I'm looking at it. Just adding one window there on the right side, accentuate underneath the eave. And then these really organic vertical lines, part of the uh, old fashioned design of this little house. There's a window here on the upper floor, coloring in those window panels with solid black ink. So the eye of a house, I like to call uh, windows of a house eyes because windows can give so much spirit to a building. And then adding some random little observational details in between those negative spaces behind the tree. Uh, kind of adding more details for the back of the lady's chair. The umbrella in the middle of the little plaza here. And in relationship to, to the umbrella, the rooftop of this little coffee shop is right above the umbrella. The little chimney there on the left vertical line to finish the sides of this little coffee shop building. More tables and chairs close to it. These crisscross legs of the wooden chairs. Yeah, they're pretty fun to draw. And another little table there. Just seeing these things very quickly and get them done without hesitation. And uh, more window and door frames for the little coffee shop over here accentuate on part of the frame to give the door a bit of three dimension and, and just moving on to draw like a customer walking into the coffee shop to order his drink and then more details behind the umbrella on this uh, coffee shop building the design of these village houses are actually pretty simple i just like the, the borders wrapping around the size of these little houses and the uh, designs of the windows. These uh, little horizontal and vertical lines, really nostalgic and European style. And these quick loose horizontal lines for the uh, rooftop texture. Okay, so that's it for the little coffee shop. There's another little house behind it. So according to the rule of perspective, objects behind another one is, um, when, when it's about the same size as the one in the front, is looking a little shorter because of perspective. In this case, the rooftop is a little lower uh, than the uh, coffee shop house. And a lady just walking past by, just to add a nice sense of relaxing atmosphere for this little village plaza here. And another square window, a little bush right under the little house there. And now I'm drawing another foreground house. The rooftop is nice and big and I'm slanting upwards towards the right. So when I'm seeing the details on a building, most of them are uh, brackets of squares or rectangles and lots of vertical and horizontal lines in various lengths and sizes. So after that, I'm drawing this little um, area over here. So as you can see, it's kind of like a one point perspective. The flower bed on the left side and and the, the, the edge line of the flower bed here on the right. Both of these two lines are going into the same vanishing point somewhere in the middle of this sketch. And I just kind of added the rooftop texture for the house there behind, which looks really nice. And this large bush here covering most of this house here on the right. And very quick leafy textures. And this large chimney here is really giving a nice sense of balance and a stronger sense of foreground. And is a uh, rectangular prism shape that we can see two sides of it. Adding more eave lines, mostly horizontal lines and the, uh, the pipes uh, that the gutters over here in between the two houses and more quick vertical lines and brackets crisscross lines that I see um, I really enjoy capturing all of these variety of patterns here for these cottage houses and then uh, quick horizontal lines as always for the rooftops 
Oh, and this roof here has a really nice lace here on the on the side, and the rooftop very much is like a brick pattern. This is how I'm drawing these little rectangles very quickly from the bottom to the top. Accentuate underneath the eave a little bit, and then start to draw these long rectangles. Um, it's a massaging house here, and some more little squares and rectangles. I think that's a little window there. And another little bush underneath. And now just quickly drawing the uh, the brick pattern for the chimney. And I really love how this chimney is standing nice and strong here on the upper right. It adds a nice sense of power for this sketch. And final polish. And that's it for the line work. It took me about 40 minutes to draw. Now it's time to add watercolors to breathe life into this little village plaza. So as usual, I'm gonna begin painting the sky first. Um, the sky is has a really mild blue tint with white clouds um, surrounding the rooftops. So I just kind of painted the negative spaces in between the clouds with a diluted cerulean blue. For these puffy clouds, I'm putting a very diluted tint of lemon yellow strengthening these negative spaces in between the clouds a little bit with a slight bit more concentrated cerulean blue. So as you can see now there are at least two values of cerulean blue using the leftover mix of bluish gray that then makes cobalt blue with a bit of royal purple to shade these clouds a little bit, usually on the bottom half of the clouds. And I believe that the sky above a landscape or a cityscape is so important to breathe life into the urban or the landscape sketch. So I just added an even more saturated or um, more concentrated cerulean blue for the gaps in between the clouds. The sky is just so pure and fresh. Now the, the, uh, the sky is very much done. Now I'm adding a bit of diluted uh, actually a quite diluted version of yellow ochre for the for the ground area, uh, burnt sienna for the soil in the flower beds on both the left and right side. And at the same time, painting a very similar color of burnt sienna or raw umber for many of these rooftops. This is a slight, a slightly diluted version of burnt sienna. So depending on the, um, the type of bricks and the materials of these rooftops, the brown could be a slightly different diluted version of burnt sienna mixed with uh, raw umber. All right, and also in between uh, the negative spaces of that tray there, I see the brown of the rooftop of the co coffee shop. And so trying to finish all of these browns at the same time, I saves a lot of time from cleaning brushes again and again, switching between colors. And mixing raw umber with a little bit, little bit of burnt sienna to paint this rooftop. I love the way that these rooftops are of different kinds of browns. And after that, I'm using these super diluted grays to shade the exteriors of these little cottage houses. And also a bit of diluted yellow ochre for some other ones. And now I'm ready to paint the first layers of the foliage. So this is lime green mixed with um, yellow ochre, diluted with a lot of water. For the first layer of very much everything, I like to keep the value or the tone of the colors pretty watery, just to really take advantage of the fluidity and the transparent quality of watercolors, that magic feel. So now I'm blending on a little bit of hooker screen mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre for the top of that tree's canopy there. And playing with the ratio of yellow ochre, lime green and hooker screen according to my observation because these greeneries are of different types of greens. And uh, I just grabbed a little burnt sienna to paint those branches for that tree there in the middle. Yeah, so a quick advice for you is that when you're painting any landscape or urban sketch, uh, paint those same or similar colors first, like how I did, uh, the browns uh, and then the greens of the foliage. So now working on the second layer for everything, I'm adding a, um, a less diluted or a more concentrated red-brown 
with、um, magenta mixed into burnt sienna, containing less water this time, using choppy brushstrokes to give a sense of the、uh, the little reliefs on the、uh, on the rooftops, the texture. And the same idea for the chimney here. I see that some of those bricks are of a stronger town of terracotta, red brown.、Um, I'm also leaving some gaps from the first layer untouched、uh, to show、uh, the lighter values of those little bricks. And just shade the right side of the chimney with leftover gray and more darker browns. Because the light comes from the left side, the right side of the chimney is more shaded, just to give that more three dimensionality.、Um, some more raw umber for those、uh, brackets around the windows there, and also here on the very right side. So this is very much raw umber with a tiny bit of cobalt blue to intensify that、uh, dark brown. So I found a lot of people's watercolor paintings to be a little less powerful because they tend to stop at the first layer of very diluted values. So、um, all you have to do is perhaps to push push a little bit further by adding a stronger value in certain places on top of your first layer to make your watercolors look more compelling. Yeah, so that's another little tip for you. So now I'm trying to add a bit of shade colors of brown here and there for those cottage houses and、um, diluted、um, burnt sienna for the flower bed, some leftover gray to shade those seemingly white areas. Those those are actually light grays. So the exterior of a white building can only be perfectly white when the sun is shining directly on it. Um, other than that,、uh, on a regular day, those white areas are actually very light grays, and I just shaded the、uh, the ground area underneath、uh, the foot of those two ladies, and those tables and chairs was leftover gray, and、um, some more bluish grays that I、uh, mix cobalt blue with a little bit of burnt sienna. Adding some little patches of more intense brown for this little cottage house here, and so it looks more、um, interesting to look at. And leftover blues for those windows, and、um, blue mixed with royal purple to paint the interesting shades of the window panels here for the、uh, coffee shop. Also using the residue to paint the grays here and there to save time. And also adding the shadow of that little chimney there, really paying attention to what's in front of me. Those interesting phenomena like shadows, and just keep shading this little gray house, pretty high up there. Now I'm trying to shade the bottom of this little shrub over here with some more intense green. So that is hooker green with a little bit of burnt sienna mix in. So these trees right now they still kind of lack a sense of volume because there's not enough shaded areas. So you really have to keep pushing yourself one step further to shade your trees, bushes, and shrubs.、Uh, usually on a sunny day,、uh, the bottom half of the trees canopy and the shrubs are more shaded than the upper half. So here, this just playing with this very saturated. Hooker screen with a little bit of burnt sienna mix in, little choppy brushstrokes to give a sense of the leafy texture. Nice and loose. Also in between the two ladies, and keep punching on this juicy and saturated, concentrated green,、uh, using choppy and impressionistic brushstrokes. So every single brushstroke is of a slightly different. Kind of green at the same time, not overpaint, leaving most of the top half of these、uh, foliage nice and bright of the yellow green or diluted green from the previous two layers. And now it's time for final polish. So I'm just getting those leftover、uh, little bits of colors done, like the hair for the two ladies, the color,、uh, the colors of their chairs, a bluish gray. And little bits of darker grays 
on the bottom of that building there, which is very darkly shaded because of the shadow of the foliage landing on there. So I'm being quite careful about the last stage, the final polish, uh, just a little bit of almost invisible values here and there, making sure not to overpaint. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna to switch to my other water brush using the leftover gray and diluted version to paint uh, the perspective of the cobblestone walkway. There it is. Here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me one hour and 20 minutes or so to draw and paint this on location. So rather than walking endlessly and trying to visit every spot of a city, I like to stay at just a few spots and do some sketches to fully absorb the atmosphere of that place. After that, we visited the Museum of Qualicum Beach. I love these displays of fossils found in the sea and also the sandy beaches of this Qualicum Beach town. Ooh, and I love this quote here. And here is an old-fashioned kitchen from many decades ago. I love the displays. Feel like traveling back in time. And that's the end of our third day of our second trip to Vancouver Island this summer. Here's Dudu listening to the crickets songs. So yeah, our Airbnb is on a farm and they have lots of um, llamas. They're grazing in the distance. And I will see you again very soon in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.